A business briefings. Today we're speaking to the Defence and Military Veterans Minister Nosiviwa Mabisa Ngakula. We're also joined by her deputy Tabang Makweta. We're unpacking all things that have to do with our uh, troops on the ground, with the Air Force, uh, with uh, the protection on the borders, the maritime, all those aspects. Remember, you can weigh in on this debate. It is all about you, it is about South Africa and what we know about where our troops are stationed and all that jazz, if I can call it and put it in layman's terms. But but do get involved with us via Twitter, uh, Morning Live SABC, is that where you can find us, and also TNA Biz Brief. So again, let me welcome you, Minister and Deputy Minister. Thanks again for your time. You spoke to us a little bit earlier in your speech about demystifying the SANDF when it comes to how South Africans see it. I'm going to ask you a very pertinent question. Uh, with hindsight and seeing what had happened in the Battle of Bengui, where we lost <coughs> over a dozen of our soldiers on the ground there, uh, the question arose, and I'm going to put it to you now, why are we involved in battles not our own? Tell us a, a bit about the, the, the diplomacy and the policy that has to do with our young men and women being stationed somewhere where we're not involved in that conflict. Well, thank you very much, Ayanda. I think I should start by saying that uh, we're not an island. We're part of the global village. And whatever conflict and tension in any part of the continent will certainly have an impact, a negative impact on South Africa its economy, and of course the migration patterns in the country. So our foreign policy states it very clearly that ours is about peace and stability, and peace and stability of course provides for development and prosperity in any country. Now, <clears throat> why are we therefore out there? We are out there precisely because we're protecting ourselves. Remember the Defense Force is the last line of, def of the defense of the sovereignty of our state and the ter or the territorial integrity of, of the Republic of South Africa. Now, it's important, therefore, that we prevent chaos and anarchy even before it reaches our, our, our own borders. But lastly, maybe to say that with... Uh, South Africa being the country it is, somehow we have a pull effect in that uh, the moment you have tensions anyway, you see thousands and thousands of migrants flocking into South Africa. So ours, when we were fighting to liberate South Africa, ours was about, not about peace in South Africa, but about peace in the continent, South Africa, with its neighbors, in the continent, and the global village. So I would say that, yes, we are a key player internationally in, in, the, in, the, in the defense arena, and I think we've done well. I think the Bangui incident was one, an isolated incident, which was very unfortunate, because we've been involved in peacekeeping for the past 20 years, but for the first time, we then suffered heavy casualties. But perhaps uh, now I should also indicate that the casualties that we suffered actually, without sounding insensitive, um, it's not as though we are the only ones who suffered. We, I think uh, the people who fought with us actually suffered heavier casualties because they lost their hundreds and we lost 15. But not only that, in spite of the fact that they are the ones who attacked us, at the end of the day, they were the ones who crawled to our, to our boat, to our base, carrying a white flag and calling for a ceasefire. So we're proud of the way, of the manner in which our men and women have performed. And I think that, uh, yes, the story of Bangui, Battle of Bangui, taught us a few lessons. And I think that perhaps one of the reasons why in our intervention now in the Democratic Republic of Congo, we are stronger. It is because we've had to take note of some of the lessons from the Bangui experience. What are some of those lessons that we learned, Minister? Well, I think it's important that in your force preparation and deployment, you make sure that one, you have adequate uh, 
intelligence uh, gathering capacity or capability. But not only that, I think that uh, the, I think at times you adopt a laser fair kind of attitude and say, no, uh, look, this, this, this is not going to affect us because we are here training some people. And perhaps uh, it's a naive stance to take, but now we know whether you go into a country to train people or you go into a country for an exchange program, if you're a soldier, you have to be on your toes, your antennas must be up, you must be vigilant all the time and appreciate the fact that if something happens, if, an, if there's an outbreak of, 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 uh, of war, then you have to put your, on your boots and be on the ground and fight. And that's what the Defence Force is about, the military is about anyway. Any soldier, any person who comes into the Defence Force does expect that anything can happen, starting from your training, you may either survive or lose your life. And, and now, for us civilians, it sounds insensitive because we're not part of that institution. But for soldiers, it is, it is, it is part of their lives. They know that anything is possible. You may, you may live, you may not live, you may not survive. And, uh, and that's it. It's the life of a soldier because it is about the defense of your country. As we speak at the moment, Minister, where are our troops deployed? I know the DRC being one. <coughs> Anywhere else? Well, we have a peacekeeping force, which is a UN force in Darfur, which has been there for quite some time. By the way, and, and, and I'm happy that you've raised it because it's important for us to clarify that we've not deployed to South Sudan for now. I know there's an outbreak of, of a conflict in that area, and there are some people have been saying, well, you are in South Sudan, where did you get the mandate from? Truth of the matter is, we're not in South Sudan, but we are in Darfur. We have been in Darfur for quite some years. And the second group, of course, is in, the, is in the, the eastern part of the Democratic Republic of Congo, also part of a UN force peacekeeping mission. But then in the eastern part of the Democratic Republic of Congo, that's where you have your peace enforcement. Mm -hmm. That's where you have uh, our people, together with Tanzanians and Malawians, uh, fighting a war in support of the Congolese. We're not on the, in the front line, by the way. We are in the, at the back. The Congolese are leading the onslaught, have been leading the onslaught against the, the bandits. Well, let's leave it there for now, uh, Minister. When we come back, we'll hear uh, from Mr. Makwetla just finding, about, uh, finding out about the rejuvenation of the image of the SANDF and what South Africans think about the forces right now. We're going to take a quick ad break. Back